right, the effect on this one is, is pretty straightforward on creating it. So I really what I want you to get out of this is some keyboard shortcuts that I'm gonna emphasize again. So let's start this tutorial. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press Command J to duplicate. What this does is it just is a faster way than going up to the menu. And then another fast way is if I press Command T, it will bring up this transformation. You can kind of see these bounding boxes that are in the corner that are showing me the boundary of that selection. If I right click in the middle, it brings up different transformation options that I don't have to go up here into the selection or into the edit area. So I can come here and I can go rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then I can move this and drag this over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have this kind of snap into place. You'll notice when I move this around, a little purple line shows up. That's just a smart guide. So it'll actually snap to the edge of the document. And if I bring it to the left and down, now it snaps perfectly in that corner. And then what I can do from here, so I'm actually gonna nudge this down a little bit with my arrow key. So I'm tapping a few times. I'm starting to see the edge of the boat, but I wanna get that little edge. There we go. And then I'm gonna double click on it to accept the transformation. So now once I've done that, I can come up here to the tools and there's the lasso tool. The lasso tool by itself, when you hold your mouse button down, just makes a selection based on whatever you've drawn around. You did one of these when we did the uh, fill on the fruit to get rid of it. If you want to cancel a selection, so say you get up close and you let go and you're like, I want to start over. If you click outside of the selection, it goes away. There's another lasso in here called the polygonal lasso. It'll let you create like polygons. So if I click on this, now what it does is when I click once, it sets down an anchor point. So this becomes kind of like connect the dots. If I come up here and I click once, it sets down the point and now I can move this somewhere else, click on it, move somewhere else, and I can kind of make a triangle. Now you'll notice on the lasso, watch what happens when I get back up towards this beginning point, a tiny little circle pops up. That lets me know I've closed the loop. But say you have a complicated one, you can't see it. If you double click, it's going to try to go back to the very beginning. In fact, it's not gonna try, it's gonna go back to wherever you started. So if I was way down here, watch what happens when I double click. It created that straight line. If I undo, I have to start over. So if I got close and I double clicked, it gives me that triangle or whatever shape that I wanna have. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just double click to cancel everything. We're gonna start over here at the bottom and I'm going to go slightly outside of the image and I'm gonna click once so I can draw a line. If I hold my shift key down, it will keep it perfectly straight. Notice when I go there, it's now straight. I'm gonna to go to the edge of where this photo is. So I'm dragging there to kind of get close and I'm gonna click one more time. What that does is it's now got that selection at the bottom. I'm gonna come all the way up here to the corner and I'm gonna go slightly outside of the corner. I'm trying to make a big right angle triangle and I'm gonna tap once. So now I've got this line and I come down here, notice the little circle came up now, right there and I can just click and now it's made a selection. So I've got this just, it looks like there's just one angle because the rest of it's along the outside edge of the photo. Now from here, the whole point of that was to show you the differences between the lassos. But now that I've got this area selected, I can choose mask and it just cuts that thing completely off. And then you've got this kind of cool effect. Now, one of the things that I think does end up kind of throwing it a little bit is this line is really sharp because of the dark color that started over here. So if you wanted to fade that out, there is a way to do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm going to make sure that my, not the photo or the thumbnail is selected, but the mask is selected. You'll know that by there's little white lines or little corners. See the difference? There's the white instead of right there. So I wanna paint on the mask. So I'm gonna come in with my paint brush. So I'm gonna click on brush. I'm gonna come up here to my brush and I'm gonna make sure that my hardness is set to zero and like 200 or so. I'm also gonna drop the opacity of my brush so it's a little bit more see-through, so it's a little more forgiving. So I'm gonna bring it to about 50% or so. Now what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna to get too close to the water, but I wanna get rid of this line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap a few times and just kind of move it around. 
and I'm just kind of tapping and moving around. I'm now going to make my brush bigger by using my right square bracket. It's above the enter key on your keyboard on the same line as the letter P. So the right bracket, the right square bracket makes the brush bigger. Left square bracket makes it smaller. I'm actually going to drop my opacity down a little bit more, maybe to like 15. And I'm just going to tap a few times. Whoops, that's too far. So if I end up doing that, it's bringing back more of the picture. So right now, black was hiding it, what's on that layer. And white is revealing what's on this layer. So I want to flip these colors. I could come up here and do it and tap a few more times. Might have to tap several times because the brush opacity is so low. And that helps a little bit. That kind of takes away that line. Still not the greatest. There's still a few things on there that I would probably want to clean up. But as far as what I really want you to get out of this was how to do some transformations and duplications using keyboard shortcuts. And then also how you can go in with the polygonal lasso versus the regular freeform lasso and make selections. And it does have that kind of cool, almost uh, cube-like box effect. So go ahead and save this one and move on to the next.